Well, good morning, everybody. We're going to get started. Come on in. Get your seats. Get them while they're ready. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being part of our 10th annual conference. This is just really incredible, and I'm truly honored and humbled to be able to stand before you this morning uh, to open this landmark event, which is now the premier uh, carbon market climate policy conference in the United States, if not all of North America. So thank you for being part of our 10th annual conference. You know, it was really just uh, a little more than 10 years ago, in 2001, that the state of California enacted uh, legislation, and, a, and another really example of uh, its foresight and its leadership, enacted legislation that created uh, our organization, the California Climate Action Registry. Uh, and it was really about 10 years ago that they actually opened the doors, and 10 years ago, uh, Mary Nichols was there as the, as the founding chair of the board. Diane Wittenberg was there as the founding president. You're going to hear from both of them very shortly. Uh, they had one staff person uh, and 23 brave companies that stepped forward and said they would be part of this new entity. And the idea then was really simple, it seemed, but it was also quite profound, and that was the state was saying to these 23 companies and all others that would join, we recognize that someday we will, we will regulate greenhouse gas emissions. This is 2001. But until that day comes, we want to encourage companies to start reducing their emissions now. And if you do that voluntarily, and if you report those emission reductions through the transparent processes, and rigorous standards of this entity that we've created, the California Climate Action Registry, then we, the state of California, pledge that we will recognize those emission reductions. Simple as that. That was the whole idea. Well, as you know, AB 32 was enacted about five years later in 2006, and it in fact codified that idea. It said in AB 32, that emission reductions that had been reported to the California Registry would be recognized. But that didn't stop the need to continue to encourage people to reduce their emissions, these early actors. And so we as an organization pivoted at that moment. And we said, we're going to focus now on quantifying and certifying those very specific activities uh, that lead to emission reductions that be, can be counted as offsets in a future regulatory program, regulatory grade offsets. And so it was really just four years ago now at our conference uh, in San Diego in 2008 that we announced the launch of the Climate Action Reserve. So the California Climate Action Registry launched the Climate Action Reserve and issued our very first offset credits to two really pioneering forestry projects that uh, were really part of us uh, in our legacy as we, as we were um, operating throughout uh, that entire, at that point, seven year history. It took us about a year to get to issuing a million credits. Uh, and today, we are the largest and I would say most highly regarded offsets program in North America we have some 500 offset projects in our system from across the United States and Mexico. And we're issuing credits now at a rate of almost a million a month. So we have really moved over the, the last couple of years. We have grown tremendously. And that's really because of the, the support and presence of all of you who've been there with us as, as our friends. And interestingly, it was just over 10 years ago, or 10 years ago, that we started this conference. Uh, and it started right here in San Francisco. The very first conference was in 2003 in San Francisco. And it started as a, as a members meeting, and it has grown and grown. 
and grown some more, and now it's this event today. And we probably actually have more speakers on the agenda over the next two days, and in, including yesterday, uh, than we actually had at that first conference. So it's really uh, an honor. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to be uh, the head of an organization that's able to put these on, but I certainly can't take credit for any of that. It is a real logistics feat uh, for us to put on an event like this, and it takes all of the dedicated staff from the Climate Action Reserve, uh, as well as our program partner this year from the Nicholas Institute. So I want to thank all of our uh, staff and, and the staff of the Nicholas Institute for the, the help and support in putting this conference on. Uh, and in particular, I want to call out one individual who uh, is not here today, unfortunately, and that is Jennifer Weiss, our communications director and conference organizer. Yesterday, she delivered uh, a true miracle uh, besides this conference, which was her first baby. So congratulations to Jennifer Weiss, and we're, we're, we understand why she's not here. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this beautiful venue. We wanted to take a, uh, a moment to reflect our 10-year history, uh, our 10 years of, of uh, this conference, and bring it into a, into a venue that really reflects that sort of milestone achievement. But I can also say that this venue, uh, and we chose it specifically for its environmental practices, is a tremendous leader in green housekeeping and green hotel practices. And so I hope you take advantage of those as well and recognize those. Now, you know, of course, that these kinds of conferences would not be possible without our sponsors. So I, I do want to take a moment also to thank uh, all of our sponsors. And we do appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, it really is with, with you that we are able to put on this kind of event. And in particular, I want to I wanna call out uh, our gold sponsors, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, Shell Oil, Southern California Edison, and Linklaters. We're really honored uh, that, you, that you are supporting us this year. And then finally, you know, our success in the global carbon market would not have been possible without a really strong dedicated, engaged, energetic, and frankly strategic board of directors. And I am privileged to serve under that board of directors that is led by uh, Linda Adams, uh, former secretary of the California EPA. So I thank you, Linda, for your leadership uh, on, on the board of directors, and I thank all of my board of directors who are here. Uh, it is really, truly an honor. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for being part of our community. It is truly inspiring to see the interest, the enthusiasm uh, in the room here today. There's going to be two days of incredible sessions, incredible speakers. Enjoy the conference. Take time. Learn. Engage with your fellow uh, conference attendees. Uh, get inspired and take action. That's really what we're about. It's in our name. I encourage all of you to take action. And then, Come back next year when we return the conference to Los Angeles, uh, the home of the Climate Action Reserve. So with that, it is my uh, great pleasure to introduce you to Linda Adams, who's not only the chair of my board, but also the founding president of the R20 initiative. So with that, welcome Linda. Thank you, Gary, for all your tremendous work in organizing this event. And um, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to navigating the American uh, car carbon world. And um, this event is significant for at least a couple of reasons. And first, of course, is that this is the 10th anniversary of the Climate Action Reserve. And um, to abbreviate what Gary uh, uh, just talked about, uh, we've come a long way, baby. And second, uh, we are on the uh, eve of launching uh, the second largest carbon market in the world, um, which is uh, very exciting. Um, and I have the uh, pleasure this morning of introducing our first speakers, uh, two uh, powerhouse uh, women who were trailblazers in the American carbon world. Um, our founding president of the Climate Action Registry, and of course we have evolved into two terrific organizations, uh, Diane Wittenberg, 
Um, I'll never forget one of the first things that Diane did after the passage of AB 32 is she organized a terrific a study trip to Europe to study the European trading system and how valuable that trip was uh, to all of us in California. And we're very um, honored that Diane has rejoined the Climate Action Reserve as an honorary board member. And Diane is currently the executive director and chair of the Electric Vehicle Collaborative. And of course, probably the most important person in the American carbon world, uh, Mary Nichols. And I just want to say how fortunate we were in California that Mary stepped up uh, to lead the design of California's cap and trade rule. There was really no better person uh, capable of taking on that challenge. Uh, with her prior experience at US EPA in trading um, NOx and SOx, her prior chairmanship at the California Air Resources Board, her uh, close relationship with um, our new governor, um, and of course a brilliant um, attorney and regulator. So with that, I would like to bring uh, Diane and Mary up for a, a conversation, and it will be very enlightening about uh, uh, how we're doing on um, uh, finalizing our cap and trade rule. Thank you, Mary. And Diane. Thank you. <laughs> you do have a